on the pitch, we talk about it till the clouds come home, they need a center forward, right? There, there's no, there's no debate there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious when we talk about how much they can push out the boat because, you know, I think you're in a position where if you can get a young impact they center forward, again. they will go again under 23. Okay, so having so they learned their lesson from this Alba Young, Willian, really? David Luiz thing, which I went on. I got I got abused from Arsenal fans. Oh no, Alba, Alba! How much? Like, come on, man! Seriously, there's a reason you don't extend players into the. 30s. Sometimes you do extend, and it works out well. It does. Sometimes it yeah, does. you extend them by you extend them a year at a time, but whatever. Um, so if they're going to do that move, I'm trying to. See, are there other immediate needs that you can spot, or can you whatever budget may or may not be there? Should they just put all their chips on that? Because I, when I look at the rest of the squad, I'm like, okay, there's situations that you can upgrade, obviously. Yeah. But there's decent depth. Maybe yeah. a little. Maybe they could use another central defender, possibly, um, in the mix. Yeah, maybe. Other than that, I mean, Sambi Lakonga is fine. And then he's fine as, as, as backups, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, no, completely. Um, Offensively, it's interesting because that was my next question to you. Who do you pick between Odegaard, Smith, Rose, Saka, Martinelli? You can only have three of them. I don't think he will play all four of them unless you move Martinelli no. centre forward. But I think you lose a lot of his ability, as we saw on the goal, from him to make those runs, you know, diagonal runs, or certainly from deep into the box, which he would not do as a centre forward. So and you have Pepe as well. So yeah, you've got five Pepe for well. three spots. You're sorted. I, I think you do that on a form, on a week by week. See, see where the yeah, best yeah, chemistry maybe. is. Martinelli's only come back. Let's see how he fits with the others. But if you go back, if it is a striker, yeah. are you looking for a powerful striker, a quick striker? What, what, what do you think Arteta is thinking? I think he's thinking English mostly to start with. I think they really want. I think they want someone who knows the league already. I mean, you know, I don't. I don't think they would say no to Vlaovic or Isak if they can sign them. I think they, they're also on the list. Whether it's possible or not, I don't know. But My mind is racing to English strikers under the age of 23. So I think someone like Oli Watkins, for example, ticks a lot of boxes because he presses well. He's, fitness-wise, he's, he's very good. He's, he's athletic. He's quite strong. He will develop his, his, his game back to goal and he will learn to hold the ball up better than he does now, etc., etc. But I think... I think on that pro that profile is good. He's a good finisher as well. I think you know someone like Calvert Lewin. Again, those might be they might be pro star or they might not be able to take them to get them because they Everton or Villa or right. whoever might not let them go. But I think uh, on top of the the Vlaovic and the Isaks and those kind of European strikers, I think those those are. Can we say those four names are the are the the, the wish list? Calvert Lewin, certainly... Isak. Vlaovic and, and Watkins. Ollie Watkins. Why do you why do you do that face for Ollie Watkins? I think Ollie Watkins is very is a very good young player. I think he is, but my difficulty with of those four, right? Very realistically, I mean, and I'm without ranking who's better. I mean, I I have a clear idea of those four who has the highest ceiling of those four, and in my opinion, it's Vlaovic who has the highest ceiling yeah, yeah. by far yeah, of those four. And you could argue Calvert Lewin is the most proven in in the Premier League because he has scored a lot of goals. In, in, you in know, the I Premier prefer League. Watkins than Calvert Lewin. If I had to pick, I would go for Watkins. My difficulty, though, is that if you're Arsenal and you go to Everton and you go to Villa, those are two teams that do not have they, they have wealthy owners and they do not have financial difficulties. Yeah. I know Everton might get into some issue with now with uh, the short-term cost controls or whatever, and the Premier League's version of financial fair play. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. realistically. You know, if they let Calvert Lewin go after the the way the team is going, the Benitez thing, you know, then the fans are going to yeah, come no, with them with course, pitchforks, of course, right? Of course. And Watkins, also, I think it's a similar story with Villa. I don't know off the top of my head what his contractual situation is, but Villa are not in a position to sell. Now, obviously, if you no. show up with seventy million, hey, maybe I don't yeah, like Watkins so much anymore, right? But whoever it is, it would be expensive. But the other two, Vlaovic has a contract that's winding down. Now we've said we've covered this many times. His agents look like they're an absolute nightmare to deal with. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Fiorentina are in a situation where they seem inclined to sell, maybe even in January, yeah. uh, if the right price comes in. Um, Would Vlaovic go to Arsenal, though? Only if there's Champions League football? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think that plays into his mind at all. Uh, I, think, I think from the agent's perspective, if you pay them, they're happy. If you go to Arsenal, 
you've got a big stage. We, 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 the reason we keep bringing up old Champions League football. No, no, I'm just I wondering if it's an attractive. I, no, obviously it's a plus, but I think people want a stage, right? Yeah. The Premier League gives you that stage, yeah, yeah. right? Vlaovic knows that if he comes to Arsenal and he scores 30 goals, then one of two things are going to happen. Either Arsenal are going to get in the Champions League yeah. or, you know, City or United yeah, or Barcelona are going to yeah. – Barcelona, no, <laughs> Real Madrid or whatever – are going to talk to him, right? Yeah. And, and I think that's what, what you want as a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's interesting because I think if I had to draw a commonality between those four, you – these are all physically strong strikers – um, these are all quite athletic strikers yeah. who, of the four, maybe the one who has the least experience with the pressing game is probably Isak, I would yeah, argue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, they're all people who can still be molded. Yeah, completely. I think if Arsenal go down that route, I think they're, they're going in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved them to, to even, even if you sign someone, because I would love them to keep, like I said, because of what he brings to the whole place. And obviously, you know, I, I'm completely biased here, which I, I'm, I'm very happy to admit. But I think he's, he's. I was talking to Arteta after the game against West Ham, and he said he's such an. Arteta said about like I said, he's such an, an intelligent player. He's quite incredible. You, you tell him one thing, and he does it straight away. He, he has so much to his game in terms of the press, dropping, finishing encouraging everyone, all of that, which I think is very valuable in the dressing room. I, I can understand why you want to move on and et cetera, he's out of contract, all of that. But I still think he's, he's a big value to that dressing room. Okay. And I think him leaving, when we talked about leadership and leaders, you would lose that side. Sometimes we get those situations, right, where, you know, we've been, in this, we've been doing this job a long time where we have a real insight because we happen to know some of these players. So let me ask you about Lacazette. Viewed from man on the street fan perspective, leave the business side away, right? Lacazette makes about ten million pounds a year on his current contract, right? I think he'd be the first one to say, "Oh, I, I am kind of overpaid, given where the club is um, right now." If they were to go to him and say, "Laka, we'll give you a one-year deal at the same amount," do you think he would take it? It's a good question. Or do you think, think he would say, yeah, wait, I'm no. not going to take it because you're still signed a center forward and then I might be on the bench and I'm, I'm in my 30s now and sure, I like living here and I love the club, but I also want to play. Yeah, do you see what I'm saying? It's not an easy situation for, for a player like him at that stage of his career where he, if, he, if he decides to go on free, wherever he goes, he can go back to, to Lyon, to wherever he wants, to France, go to Italy, go to Spain. Barcelona, we haven't mentioned Barcelona. Yeah, no, but you know, he would get, he would get signing on fee, he would get a big I think wage package because there's no transfer fees, you know. So I think he'll be getting a page a pay cut on an annual basis. I think yeah, he might no, get but a maybe for the wages, deal. but that's the same if he stays anyway. Yeah, no, no. So of course, yeah. you know, but in terms of signing on fee and yeah. all of that, so I don't know. It's tricky. What, he's just enjoying his football right now, and we saw that against West Ham, where again he, he missed the penalty. Of course, he's a good save by Fabianski, but he was he was he was so good at linking up everything, and and I, th I think he could have a really really good. Next six months now in the team with a good one in the team, the armband, whatever. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.